Hi, and welcome to the Community Advocate Podcast. Today, we're catching up with Deb Samuels, People Portfolio Lead at the Foundation for Rural and Regional Renewal, FRRR, to talk about the impact on ageing population is having on community connection in remote, rural and regional Australia, and why it's important to pass the baton on to a new generation of volunteers. Welcome, Deb. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks for taking the time. Um, First of all, I think, uh, and, and we can get into you know what what you do at FRR and what you've seen. But is it a fact of life that older members of country communities in the engine room are volunteering in the in the bush? I mean, that's generalising a lot, but is that something you you tend to see? And what why is that? Where why are we at that point? Mm, I think there's a lot of first of all, yes, we're definitely seeing it as a very pervasive issue across rural and regional and remote Australia. Um, And in the communities that I specifically work with doing place-based capacity building work with not-for-profits that are largely volunteer-led, it's an especially prominent issue. So we we work with communities and talk with organisations about what their challenges and struggles and opportunities are. And this succession planning is definitely one of the the biggest issues that comes up with volunteer-led organisations. And there's there's, uh, multiple reasons, I think, and I think we we like to, I mean, an an easy one to point the finger at is COVID um, that really disrupted so many things and systems and normal sort of progressions of of rites of passage and things like that in in our society. But I think in particular, um, just building that bridge between our our ageing populations in regional um, communities and younger populations in regional communities there's there's some work to be done there. How how critical has it become? Like you've said, there's some work to be done and things like COVID have exacerbated the issue, but is it reaching a point mm-hmm. where, and I know FRR are doing a lot of work in this area, but where it's becoming quite crucial with, yes, people becoming older and their capacity isn't always there, you know, to continue what they may have been doing for, for decades. Is it reaching a tipping point or we're not there yet? Um, I mean, I think I've I've definitely sort of heard in the zeitgeist that there is some tipping points happening for some small organisations that are volunteer-led or have really been led by um, very specific volunteers, you know, eight that are now um, at the point where they're really looking to retire and pass the baton, but there's no one to hand it to. And those organisations um, at risk of actually closing down or those initiatives not continuing. Um, I would say that we're we're still a solution away from um, a, 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 a true tipping point from what I've been seeing is that the volunteer energy, there, there is some burnout um, among older volunteers and that sense of responsibility to sort of keep holding that space, um, but determination to want to do it as well and, and, and openness, I, I think, to understanding perspectives of how they might be able to engage younger volunteers to into that work. Why why are the activities that, you know, this cohort of people that you're doing that have been, um, you know, the, the sense of connection, why is it so important for, for these remote, regional and, and rural communities? I mean, it sounds obvious, but it's very much a part of the fabric mm-hmm. of life in these these places. But why why is it so important, the work that no, they do so- in these organisations? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just I just came from um, a, 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 a catch up meeting, um, and in a room adjacent, um, the amazing, wonderful red hat ladies were meeting for their fortnightly catch up, and you know, then they talk about what they can do for the community, and then thinking about organisations like the local Rotary Club and other organisations that are always out there doing so much for the community. There's just something beautiful that happens within a community, I think, when people come together for common good and without that um, without that overarching uh, uh, premise of this is my job to do it. Mm-hmm. It's actually something I'm really passionate about. We're all working together to pull together to make our community a better place for everyone to live. So there, I just think that um, that energy is really hard to beat. I think it's great for mental health. I think it's great for connection. I think there's, um, you know, we, we also hear about the epidemic of loneliness for older people and it, it is a, um, you know, an effort to, to, to combat that as well. Um, but in, in general, there are just things that wouldn't happen in regional communities without volunteer efforts. Um, there's, there's a whole economy around <laughs> the, the effort that volunteers put in, which can't be discounted. 
how are younger Australians in these sort of communities responding to the to the challenge and 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 stepping up? Like, is there a Yes, COVID's played a role, and like a lot of you know older people have been doing this for a lot of years. But has there been a reticence from some younger people to step up? Or uh, I mean, that's, I'm speaking very generally. But how is that being addressed? Or is there a recognition amongst a lot of younger people that they need, you know, to try and step into the breach? Or is that it's a work in progress, obviously too? But how is that happening? You know, it's interesting, Greg. Obviously, I have, I have. Um a perspective based on the work that we've been doing and the outreach that we've been doing uh, with the programs that I oversee and would never presume to speak on behalf of, you know, all communities or all young people. And there are other organisations that probably have, you know, much bigger body of research on this. Um, but I will say what we've seen is that it, there isn't really a reticence. I think there's a, a, a knowledge gap and a connection gap. Um, and I think that young people they 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 care about their community they want to get involved they're just often not really aware of the community sector in a way that would be helpful they're not aware that they could potentially connect their passions and their future goals to volunteering and to the to the type of experience and connections and and networking that would happen um in those in those opportunities. And I think once they have a chance, once the forum is created for them to step into that, they're super excited about it and they want to do it. So I think there is just a bit of an opportunity um, gap. And I think for the organisations that are being volunteer led, we consistently hear we love to engage more young people. We want more young people to come and we open the door and we say, please come. I don't think what we're seeing is that that's not really enough. Just to invite uh, young people to come and sit at a table that's operating in the same way that it has for probably a very long time, I think young people uh, really appreciate being asked for their perspective and potentially offering new ways of, of doing things and new ways of volunteering that perhaps aren't exactly the same as what their parents and grandparents have done. And that's fair enough. It's just so that's kind of a generational thing, isn't it? Like different attitudes and, you know, it's not an un unreasonable. doesn't mean they want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but they're thinking, well, if you, yeah, they're, they're thinking differently and otherwise, you know, you don't want things to remain exactly the same. And so they could, like these different groups could learn from each other in that sense. That's that, right. What's your background in general in terms of, you know, volunteering and how did you get to the point where you are now and, you know, maybe sure. describe your role at FRRR? Absolutely. Well, before um, joining FRRR, um, my background was working in the not-for-profit sector for decades um, in the youth empowerment space. So definitely have a long history of working with young people, especially disadvantaged young people. Um, and I, I will say that that um, often uh, volunteering is something that um, while most young people would really care about you know, community service and, and, and giving back to their communities. In a hierarchy of needs, when you're facing disadvantage and challenges, it can be hard to put that at the top of the list because you're really worrying about, you know, getting a job and, and or getting through school or taking care of your family or whatever it is that are the challenges that you're facing. So I've seen that for a very long time. Um, but I will say, too, that once you give young people um, the scaffolding and the support and the encouragement to step into giving back um, and probably giving back more broadly than just volunteering as well, because there's lots of ways to give, um, they, they love it. You know, they embrace it. Um, it, it. It does all the same good things for them that we were talking about before that it does for our um, older volunteers in the community. So I think, it, but that, that again, that bridge is creating that opportunity and creating that scaffolding and not just going, come along. You know, there has to actually be, um, uh, incentive is probably not the right word, but the, the um, framework, I guess, uh, that they can see themselves in and, and that looks enticing and looks like it might be something that's fun and that might actually be an opportunity for them to connect with something that they're really passionate and really care about. And, and how, so that was that was my experience before FRRR. Sorry, I didn't really yes. answer that question today. No, you did. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, my question came in two parts, which I know could be annoying, but yeah. yeah. So the uh, second part is my role at FRRR is that I oversee 
uh, our place-based programs that are focused on building capacity for people living in rural, regional and remote Australia and through two specific programs. One is our Investing in Rural Community Futures program, which has largely been in New South Wales, but we're now expanding into Victoria, um, which is really working in a very place-based way with small regional communities that are largely, um, you know, fueled by the efforts of volunteer-led small not-for-profit organisations. So we definitely, you know, we build roadmaps with them, um, really have a community-led response to the localised challenges so that the community is better equipped at the end of that five-year program to really thrive into the future. And then the other side of my um, the portfolio that I oversee is our Youth Futures Program. So that is... Um, things like the Hay the ABC Haywire program that we partner with. We have, there's a new ABC um, initiative called Takeover that uh, we just ran down in Victoria last week, which was fabulous, uh, which is a place-based youth initiative and um, also a partnership with the Vincent Fairfax Family Foundation for Backing the Future. And all of those initiatives, um, oh, and I miss Trailblazers, which is another one um, fueling regional young people. But in all of those initiatives, and probably specifically the Takeover Program, we have the opportunity to really work intensively with a group of younger people who are really thinking about the future and make sure that they are not just aware of the community sector and the importance of it, but connected to it. Um, and we like last week we we connected this group of 35 young people in a region to six local not-for-profit organizations and the teams that work within that and those young people now have the opportunity to continue on being connected to those organizations that are around issues that they really care about to make their community a better place for young people to grow up into the future and what are you seeing in in the communities that you you do get to, I mean, you can't be every single one, but you'd be pretty well-travelled given your portfolio. The reactions from the not-for-profits, that like, are they thinking these efforts are starting to bear fruit a little bit, like people that have been in these non-for-profits and perhaps, you know, the other side of the car help been doing it for years? Are they seeing it starting to change a little bit? I know that's being a bit general, but is it this generational transformation taking place? For them, because it's a long game, isn't it? That we're playing here. It's it's definitely a long game, and and I think I think defining young people is really important too, Greg. Because I mean, we we work with you know high school aged young people, 15, 16, up to eighteen, and then of course there's sort of eighteen to thirty five, sometimes even forty. I mean, I know um, I still consider myself a relatively young person, and I'm not anywhere near any of those age groups. So I think <laughs> young is very subjective. Um, and I think there's also a bit of a sort of a volunteering gap in that sort of young professional, um, uh, young families sort of space where there's a lot of life pressures. You know, you, 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 you're you relatively young in your career, so you're putting a lot of effort into that and um, living in a regional community and trying to raise a family and, and all of those other things um, that are going on. So I think that, you know, there's efforts happening across all of those. And I would say that, yes, there's progress being made, but it moves at the speed of, of community efforts and it moves at the speed of trust. And what we've seen, and I think the space that we sort of uniquely hold at this point with some of these program initiatives at FRRR is that having an organisation, an intermediary organisation like FRRR get things started by convening, you know, discussions and 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 doing having the conversations, um, making sure that all voices are heard, that young people's voices and perspectives are heard, and that the community organisations and the older volunteers' voices are heard, and then bringing those groups together in ways that is really relatable and um, appealing to both of them, and and getting those conversations happening so that everyone feels like they're part of the conversation on an equal footing um, and we're sort of trying to, you know, minimise that power imbalance um, mm. that can sometimes happen, especially for young people. I think those kind of conversations are definitely happening in these pockets, um, at least that we're involved with, which is super encouraging. And is there traction? Yes. Is there more work to do? Yes. <laughs> definitely. Always. 
So, I mean, you probably partly right. answered the question. I'd say, are you optimistic that today's young Australians are stepping up to be, you know, the next generation of leaders in this space? And as and by young, uh, as you've defined, like that could be right. from, you know, that high, you know, young younger, uh, still at school to people in their forties, which is a fair point to make, too. That that's right. Quite often the um, but the when we say an aging vol- uh, volunteer population, they could be quite. They may have been doing this for decades, but you are confident the building blocks are being put in place. You know, you're seeing those green shoots that because this is the backdrop to the national volunteering strategy, and I know that's wider. And we're talking about it all yeah. kind of ties into a lot of these themes, doesn't it? That trying to get more people in general to participate, in, you know, no matter it where does. they live. Yeah, it does, and I I think that it's part of a it's part of a sort of a lifelong commitment to 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 contributing to the fabric of the community that you're living in, especially in regional um, communities that are often you know, as as we said before, fueled by these volunteer efforts. So it has to be something that, you know, you you have as part of your part of your life, an important part of your life. So starting that young is is really important. And is there reason to be hopeful? Absolutely. You know, I, what we've seen is when we go in and create these sort of scaffolded op- opportunities, young people are excited, community organizations are excited. Um, the efforts that they're able to put forth. I mean, I think one of the things we hear consistently from community organisations is, oh, my goodness, young people have amazing ideas. Like they, they're they not sort of, I guess they, they, they're they not hindered by what has been, you know, they're, they're really looking at things with, with fresh eyes. They bring skills to the table that perhaps are not as present, um, you know, around technology, for example, and how to navigate that part of running small organizations um, but there's so many other things too you know they, they they bring fresh perspective and an interesting thing that came up last week when we were down in um, in Gippsland in the Latrobe Valley with this group of young people who came together to build six ideas for change um, they were really talking about you know creating pathways and opportunities for young people and that being a significant challenge. And I think looking at volunteering and giving back as a way to be an important part of that journey of building future opportunities for young people is a way that we can continue to build that hope as well. It's not just the, the you know, you go to finish school or, or do your TAFE or go to uni or go and get your first job and then you're on your way. It's how do you how do you build this sort of I guess portfolio of of contributing to your community, which then of course builds a portfolio for how you're going to spend your time in in the future as well. Oh, worries! Look, that was fantastic. Thank you for that. I realise it's a you know a reasonably quick chat about what's a very long and involved you, you know a lot going on in this space and the efforts of F, F- R, But that was a pretty good overview of where we're at. But it's good to see you. So you know, genuinely optimistic about the future in this, you know, particular space, because it is important. I mean, I live in a major city in Melbourne, but I know, we all know what country communities are, you know, uh, are like, and that social fabric and that connection is very, very important, yeah. as it is in cities, but particularly in small, you know, rural and remote areas, I think. Thank yeah. You. Whenever we come away from one of these events that uh, or workshops that we do with young people and, and community members, um, the pervasive takeaway is oh my gosh we feel so so hopeful the future is in good hands with young people so i i I think that there is optimism when those opportunities are created as well so just generally speaking you know young people i think have so much potential that is untapped and um, i'm really hopeful in with this sort of youth futures um, perspective at frr that we can really um, continue to embed these opportunities Thanks, Deb. That was fantastic. Lovely uh, uh, to meet you and uh, have a chat. We'll join us again next time for the Community Advocate podcast.